It's called for the purpose of discussing the um, situation with our Massachusetts affiliate. So I will call this meeting to order at this time. We are going to start with um, public comment. I am looking at 10 minutes of public comment, one minute per speaker. So with that, I believe Dan Lewis is first on the list. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. So um, first of all, I think this meeting is pretty dilatory, um, which is why I think if the LNC wants to get involved as a representative of the Professional Wrestling Caucus, I propose that we have a lumberjack match. And what a lumberjack match is, is essentially a bunch of people outside of the ring stand outside to watch the competition happen and make sure that it is fair. So if the LNC does want to get involved with this, I think we should have a lumberjack match on behalf and on uh, sponsored by the Professional Wrestling Caucus. Thank you. That is all. Thank you. Madam Chair, Mr. Phillies is asking in the chat how to raise his hand, so I believe he may want to be recognized. Okay, um, Mr. Phillies, and for anyone else listening who also has this question, there hopefully on your interface there is a reactions button, and if you click on reactions there you will find a variety of features. Raising your hand should be one of them. Um, if you are dialing in by phone, that is a different matter. And I know there is a mechanism for which to do it, but I don't know what it is. Um, so Mr. Phillies, I see you, I see a waving hand. So yes, we will go with that. Um, Mr. Phillies, uh, Tyler. Hello, can Dickinson. you hear me? Yes. yes. Uh, George Phillies, I was a member of the Lama State Committee from 2004 to 2018. A substantial part of the bylaws were rewritten under my assistance, in particular, the adoption of Francis and Francis as interpreted by the state committee. Uh, my advice to you is one, the petition to have a special state convention was valid in all respects. Two, the action of the state committee to expel the people who signed the petition as a way to identify who the infiltrators were was valid in all respects. And therefore three, your committee has nothing to do except smile and have a nice evening. Thank you, Mr. Phillips. Likewise, I hope you do the same. Um, Nicholas Sarwark, I presume. Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Billiou. Uh, one minute is the limit? That is correct. Okay. Uh, my name is Nicholas Sarwark. As some people may know, I served as chairman of the Libertarian National Committee from 2014 through 2020, three consecutive terms. We had the experience many times during my tenure of state parties seeking national involvement in their internal disputes. Usually one side or the other feels like they got the short end of the stick and wants national to get involved. It was our policy uh, during those six years of the LNC that the answer was that the bylaws do not allow the LNC to get involved in state party affairs, and we stayed out of them. Um, as some people may know, the Oregon situation took multiple years and appellate courts to resolve, and other state party situations have not been helped. The best thing that the committee could do tonight is to adjourn the meeting at which business could be conducted and postpone until, and leave the Zoom open for people to gather the information get a written motion, and then put that motion to the LNC special counsel to determine whether or not legally the LNC can do it without um, getting the judicial committee involved or going outside of their bylaws. That would allow the entire committee to review the evidence from the video proceeding that would be recorded without pushing into a hasty decision that might get them back in trouble. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sarwark.
Um, I see someone by the name of Ann Reed with llama as a designation in the name. Um, this is still public comment. I don't know if this is appropriate for now or for later, but um, Ann Reed, if you would like to go ahead and speak now. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you very much. Um, I, I am a, a Pang uh, Lama member, as well as vice chair of the Libertarian Party of Worcester County. Uh, here in a very friendly capacity, I was not I was not a signer of the petition in question, uh, but I still am here in sympathy with an effort to um, ask for uh, nationals endorsement uh, in, in writing of the reinstatement of the removed membership, the 47 members from across Massachusetts. Uh, it, is, it is very well understood uh, by the effort, the persons uh, hoping to be reinstated. It's understood that you neither have nor wish to exercise an, any imaginary authority to tell anyone to tell uh, the Lama Committee what to do, and that is not being sought tonight, uh, to my knowledge, uh, not, not at all. And it's my understanding that uh, Janelle Holmes, um, uh, who is, uh, well, who, who sat in, on the uh, Lama Committee up until ver this incident very recently, uh, is here to make a, a formal statement, but I did want to clarify with everyone um, that this is not, this will not be a request to ask that you 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 hit the hammer down, the, the gavel down on anybody or, or with the state. This is, this is a request for a diplomatic um, endorsement um, and, and just a communication. Thank you so much, Madam Chairwoman. Thank you. Um. Is there anyone else seeking to be recognized during public comment? Mr. Harris, are you keeping time? Uh, I am not keeping time unless instructed to keep time. Okay. I, I have been keeping time, Madam Chair. Okay, how much time is left in public comment? How much time did we have set? 10 minutes. For, uh, we have five and a half minutes left. All right, thank you. Uh, Mr. Phillies, I did see a hand up just now and then it went away. Do you, do you still have something to say? Um, I will make one other point since someone, can you hear me? Yes, sir. I will make one other point since Oregon was raised and before that there was Arizona, which goes back a while. In both of those cases, the state parties, the groups that were not happy with the LNC sort of sat there in their state and allowed things to resolve one way or the other internally. Um, it appears to me that the at least one of the Delaware groups, if the LNC were to act against them, would, um, and the Massachusetts is in the same boat, I suspect, may not be content to sit in their own state. And this would cause all sorts of national problems. So possibly staying out of this would be good. That's my advice. Best of luck. Thank you. Madam Chair. Who, who is that? This is Ken Mullen. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I, I, I was going to say, if there are no other hands raised, I would move that we uh, move along in our agenda. Second. All right. Uh, there, there have been no other people interested in uh, speaking during public comment. We've got a motion to end it and move on with our agenda. It has been seconded. Is there any objection to that? Hearing no objection, on we go. Ms. Hogarth, I see your hand is up for regular business. Yes. I'm not sure if we've taken roll yet. Um, oh, no, that's a good point. We have not. Um, is the secretary here? Yes. All right. Ken, are you ready for a roll? I will be. That wasn't my please. comment, by the way. I know. <laughs> I know, Sorry. but thank you for picking up on that. We'll get right back to you. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Wilford. Absolutely. Just need to copy and paste something once I find it. Actually, um, copy. 
copy. I'll do for now. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, Ms. Bill, you. Uh, present. Mr. Mullman. Here. Uh, Hagen. Here. I'm here. Evke. I'm hearing nothing from Evke. Uh, Longstreth. Here. All right. What's up? Here. Sarwark. Here. Smith. Hearing nothing from Smith. Lucini. Hearing nothing from Lucini. Michaela. Present. Uh, <laughs> Anna. Uh, here. Hewitt. Hearing nothing from Hewitt. Hogarth. I'm here. Uh, Phillips. Hearing nothing from Phillips. Adams. Here. Bowen. Here. Uh, Flores. Here. Sexton. Hearing nothing from Sexton. Hall. Present. Uh, Ferreira. Present. Uh, Dassing. Hearing nothing from Dassing. Buffman. I'm present. Vest. Here. And Ford. Here. Okay, give me just a second to get that counted up. All right, um, Ms. Hogarth, you were saying. Yes, I would like to move that uh, we confine this meeting to no more than one hour from now. That would be 8.45 Eastern time. Objection. I object also. Uh, Ms. Hogarth, I'll I second. Heard... Who who was that? Longstreth. Okay, so we have a motion to essentially limit the time for this meeting to sixty minutes, uh, and it was seconded. And there was objection. Ms. Hogarth, would you like to speak to your motion? Yes, um, I I believe that's plenty of time to allow. I think that there was a list of three to five speakers to allow each of those people to speak and be briefly questioned by members of the board without getting into repetition and um, yeah, a repetition. I think that's plenty of time. And I will point out that this is a Sunday night and uh, many of us do have uh, nine to fives. Thank you, Ms. Hogarth. Um, the first objection, I believe, came from Mr. Ford. Yes, it did. Um, I'd like to point out that uh, I actually have an eight till about 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I'd like to point out that we have chosen to cancel the next in-person LNC meeting, which uh, through the miracle of perhaps remote telecommunications might have been an ideal format uh, for this. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, we've abdicated our responsibility to have a quarterly meeting. Um, and I'd also like to point out that there are while we can debate earnestly the role of the LNC in fixing this situation, we need to acknowledge the fact 
that this is what the third and there will soon to be probably as of tomorrow night, a fourth situation in which one can allege that affiliates are gatekeeping, preventing people from joining or pe pe preventing people from maintaining their memberships. As a libertarian who believes that membership it, it, it gives you fundamental rights to an organization and that there should be due process before one membership is revoked, uh, I find this to be dangerous and at least worthy of open conversation where the membership can hear our thoughts on it, regardless of the outcome of the meeting. Thank you. Uh, okay. Um, it has come to my attention that this motion would require two thirds approval. Um, I would rather avoid the hassle of a vote that's going to waste even more time. I withdraw. It it belongs to the body now, so. Um, Sorry, then I don't. <laughs> so, uh, if if there's no further discussion on this, we can go to a vote on it. Um, the any objections to proceeding to a vote on this, and essentially dispensing with it. All right, uh, we are now proceeding to a vote on whether or not to limit debate to sixty minutes per Ms. Harlow's Ms. Hogarth's motion. Um, again, it requires two thirds to be adopted. Uh, Mr. Wilford, how would you like to do this roll call as usual? Yeah, I'll, I'll do roll call as usual. I will point out that um, because of some technical issues on my side, uh, I don't have uh, the nice chart I usually do. Um, so I'm gonna go down and call out representatives. If I don't hear from a representative, I will then call the alternate. And once I do that, I should be able to highlight it in such a way I can proceed forward more quickly. Um, and starting going in alphabetical order, um, Adams. No. Uh, Bowen. No. Epke. She wasn't here. So okay, there's not an alternate there. Uh, Hagen. Uh, no. Um, Hewitt. Fiera? No. Uh, Hogarth? Yes. All right. Uh, Lucini? Flores? No. Uh, Longstreth? No. Uh, Molman? Nope. Nana. No. Uh, Michaela. No. Phillips. Bethman. Yes. Ratsa. No. Sarwart. Yes. Uh, Smith, I think he was absent. Hear nothing from Smith. I'll vote yes. Uh, Madam Chair, it's going to fail either way. I won't vote. Okay. Um, the vote fails with four in favor. <laughs> Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten opposed and one abstention. Can, can you tell me how many actual voting LNC members are present? How many do we have actually voting tonight? Because a couple of our um, at-larges are missing and they do not have alternates. So I yeah, just there know there exactly how many seats. There are seats unrepresented, leaving us with a total of 15 right. represented seats. 15, thank you. No problem. All right. Um, Ms. Sarwark, I had you on deck. Are you over it? Uh, yes, I, okay, I'd be ready to speak. Um, I, so we can't act on anything presented tonight due to the, due to our own bylaws and also the subject of the meeting, right? Um, and so I'm going to make a motion to adjourn officially ending the LNC business meeting, but I would suggest leaving the Zoom open for as long as staff is amenable. 
um, for any interested parties. And then should any motion or decision need to be made, it come through the business list after being presented to our special counsel. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Objection. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn is always in order and not debatable. We have an objection to adjournment, so we will proceed to a vote on adjournment. Uh, I believe this is majority only. So, Mr. Wolford, when you're ready. Okay, and now going to reverse order, I will vote yes. Um, and I should now be able to actually call it who's voting. Um, is Smith still absent? I'm not hearing anything from Smith. Uh, Sawwork. Yes. Yes. Uh, Rod Seth. No. No. Uh, Buckman. Yes. Yes. Uh, Nikayla. Um, you know, I'm gonna, I just wanna make sure this meeting is properly chaired. I think that's the way I'd like to see it. So I don't know what the intention is, if we'd like to continue that or not, but I'll vote no for now. Okay. Um, Nana. No. No? Molman. No. No. Longstreth. Pass. Jeez. Pass. Um, yeah. Flores. No. No. Hogarth. Yes. Yes. Uh, Fiera. No. Wait, is Hewitt here? As far as I know, he's still not here. Okay. And then Fiera. Well, I'm sorry. What did you say, Fiera? No. No. Okay. Let me mark that. I don't know. Um, Hagen. Uh, no. No. Uh, FQ is not here. Um, Bowen. No. No. Adams. No. No. Uh, Madam Chair, it's going to fail either way. Uh, I still need to vote and I'll abstain. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Longstreth, right? Correct. Correct. Uh, abstain on Longstreth, Madam Chair. I will vote. Okay. Uh, motion fails. Four in favor. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine opposed, and two abstain. All right, so the motion to adjourn fails. Uh, Mr. Ferreira, I see you ready to speak. Yeah, just a, I guess a point of personal privilege, I would say. I wanted to thank uh, Tyler Harris for giving up yet another weekend to uh, administer one of these meetings for us. Um, uh, when we take the votes to have these meetings, we definitely uh, think of ourselves, but not always of our staff. So thank you very much. Sir. Here, here. Here, here. And he already did this for the Judicial Committee as well earlier today, which was not was scheduled without the consideration of any of us so <laughs> all right um was that it mr ferrero that was it trying to lower my hand ms adams yes i'd like to just go ahead and start jumping right into this um by asking Mr. Dan Fishman, who i know is on the call um to just give us kind of a brief overview of uh, the two entities and their relationship to each other in Massachusetts, the two entities being LAMA and LP Mass, kind of um, an introductory uh, primer, if you will, for many members of this board and many um, members who do not live in Massachusetts, as far as what the statuses of those entities are, how they're filed as separate organizations, how they interact, all of that good stuff. I do think that that is pertinent to us as if we have one registered affiliate and another entity using our branding and our name. So I would like to hear from Mr. Fishman about that, if we could start there. 
Mr. Fishman, are you available? I, I, I am on. Uh, I would ask that uh, Ms. Crawford, who has been in the party since in the Massachusetts party since the beginning, precede me uh, as she is more expert than I. And then I just have a bunch of paperwork and documentation that I can show you guys that will explain the separation in greater detail. I believe Mr. Phillies would be able to speak to this as well. I don't particularly care which individual speaks to it, just that we get a clear understanding of the structure of these two organizations, how they interact, all of that good stuff. Um, Ms. Crawford, are you available? And yeah, able yeah, and, I, and, and we, we made some changes to the bylaws since George wasn't on the state committee also. So the Massachusetts laws governing what is a political party are extensive and cumbersome and they don't um, they don't jibe with the relationship that Lama has with the LNC. So what we do, and I copied this from Washington State, when we uh, did become recognized in 2016 as, as a political party by the state of Massachusetts, we defined a statutory sub-affiliate that was allowed to use the name Massachusetts Libertarian Party. And that was required to follow the laws of the Commonwealth in so far as it was possible. And um, that entity became the recognized committee of the party that the state of Massachusetts recognized as the Libertarian Party. And we subsequently kept that status for another two years with Dan Fishman's run for auditor. And in 2020, we lost that status. So at this point, in the eyes of the government of Massachusetts, there's no such thing as the Massachusetts Libertarian Party. And there is a zombie bank account that uh, we haven't figured out what to do with that has $1,600 in it that belong to that party. So Ms. Crawford, when I go to the state of Massachusetts um, website and uh, I'm searching out political parties, it, it still lists Libertarian Party of Massachusetts. When I click on that link, it redirects me to Lama. So at some point it would appear that the state of Massachusetts is still choosing to recognize LP Mass in some form or fashion. Can no, you explain No, no, they that? don't. I mean, they have it on their website, but they don't recognize us as a political party. I, I can speak to that directly. The, the as well. FEC does. I, but I can the speak. To, Massachusetts does not. Yeah, so I can speak to that directly as well. And if you'd let me share my screen. Thank you. Yeah, in fact, I just asked them for the voter list and they won't give it to us because we're not a political party. So, a uh, couple things in here. So, first, this is. Uh, the FEC filing for my uh, 2012 congressional campaign. Uh, and as you'll see uh, here listed is the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts. Uh, this is the political entity that uh, exists for filing federal uh, campaigns. And if we were to review uh, over the last year, the only person who gave any money, uh, according to the FEC to the Libertarian Association is Daniel Reek. Uh, who gave $125 a month. Uh, and that is the, the federal PAC that exists. The state PAC, uh, let me go to my page. So this is the Libertarian Massachusetts State Committee that uh, in order to become a major party in Massachusetts, you either have to have 1% of the registered voters be of your party or win a uh, get over 3% in an election. Let me see if I can shrink this down so I can get to the other screen. Uh, oh, I hate you, Zoom. Um, so there are uh, two other PACs. So the Massachusetts Libertarian State Committee is the PAC that came into existence in 2016 when Gary Johnson got 4.5% of the vote. So at that point in time, that put a bunch of burdens on the state of Massachusetts because the Libertarian Party was now an official state party. Um, the state of Massachusetts was required to list 
the Libertarians as a choice for your voter registration on their website. Uh, it was supposed to, they said that we were supposed to have a primary uh, and essentially the things that major parties have. In 2018, my auditor campaign again got over 3%, so we maintained our major party status. The biggest advantage of that was that as a state party, uh, donations have a different category. So when we were just a PAC, uh, donations are limited at, I don't recall the exact number, uh, Chris can probably tell me, but I think it's $1,000 per person. But when we were the state party, people were allowed to donate up to $10,000 to us. So we used that ability to put a lot of money into the state party to pay for signature gathering, other things. Um, just as a quick example here, you can see my campaign raised uh, $54,000. A lot of that came because we were able to run money through the state party at the time. After 2020, when we did not get 3% in a statewide election, the state party ceased to, ceased to exist. Uh, and the fact that, uh, you know, the website, the government website has a link to it, government, what can I say? Um, however, for sure, there is no such thing as an official Libertarian Party in Massachusetts anymore. If you were trying to register, you wouldn't see Libertarian as one of the drop down choices. There's only Republican and Democrat. Uh, and the, uh, so there is no state party at any point in time. However, Lama has set up a provision uh, in Massachusetts, as Chris said, when you get set up, when a state party, when a libertarian candidate gets more than 3% in an election, Massachusetts law says that that candidate's committee becomes the state party committee. So in 2016, Chris Crawford, myself, David Blau, a few other people uh, who were on the Gary Johnson for president state committee became the Massachusetts Libertarian Party committee. And we retained that until the party ceased to exist in 2020. Um, so I, I hope I made that clear. And now I just, the one other thing I want to say is that there's another pack that uh, we use. It's uh, on the screen right now, the Liberty Tree Small Government Low Tax Pack. Uh, and that is where money generally runs through uh, for things that are happening for uh, supporting candidates in statewide races. So Massachusetts controls a federal PAC. Uh, there's a federal PAC and a state PAC. Uh, and that's it, but they're PACs. There is, no, uh, there is no official state party anymore, unfortunately. I will stop sharing my screen. Um, Ms. Crawford, do you have anything to add to that or? Oh, well, there, there are some technicalities. You, you know, you can have an L next to your name, but it's called a designation and it doesn't count. We don't have a primary anymore. And the other thing is that the state committee of this um, Commonwealth entity is elected uh, by the voters. It, the, the state committee is required to be elected by the public. Um, after after the initial formation. So we did have a, during the presidential primary. So in 2020, you know, we did have elections and some of us were reelected to that. And, you know, it lasted until November when we lost our status. So to clarify what you're saying now then, the, when you're recognized by the state, voters at large, or I guess maybe just registered libertarian voters get to get to elect the state committee. When you lose party status, which is where we are now, uh, how then is that board? So, so all this while, Lama keeps doing what it does every year. Okay. Because Lama, the state doesn't really care what Lama does. So Lama continues to have conventions. Lama continues to elect the delegates to the um, national conventions. Lama is the membership organization and is the has always been, well, you know, has, has been the, for, for at least 20 years, has been the um, state affiliate of the national LP. 
So, okay. so the reason we made this, this bylaw change for the, the recognized party to be a sub affiliate of LAMA was because LAMA, you know, I did, we, we had a, a long discussion about it, but we wanted LAMA to have continuity. We didn't want to have to change our rules on the whim of, you know, the laws of Massachusetts. So LAMA goes on and on and on and on the way it does, whether this uh, state party is recognized or not. It's just, you know, to run as a candidate, you have to do some different things. There's some variations in the requirements to get on the ballot. Yeah, and perhaps what, one other thing I would put on that is that LAMA does not control Libertarian Party ballot access. So anybody who wants to can run as a Libertarian. LAMA has no control over that. And in fact, if somebody wanted to and were eligible to run as a Libertarian and they were to get over 3% in a statewide race uh, coming up this year, they would then uh, be able to designate themselves as the Massachusetts Libertarian Party. And they would be officially, officially recognized by the state and all that stuff. So right now, the Libertarian Party doesn't, Libertarian Party of Massachusetts does not exist. Uh, I have high hopes that somebody will run and get more than 3% in a statewide race. And then uh, the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts will exist. All right, uh, Ms. Adams, did you have anything further on that particular line of questioning or anyone else you wish yeah, to? Yeah, I just have one thing. Um, Mr. Fishman, you said that um, for your race, you and Ms. Crawford and others became the LP, LP Mass Committee and LP Mass became kind of the state party. How were you ch all chosen to that? To because that we were the state committee for the Gary Johnson for president campaign in 2016. And so Massachusetts law says that if a candidate gets more than 3% on a minor party, then that candidate's state committee, that candidate's committee becomes the state committee for the new party. So everybody who was the Gary Johnson, uh, Gary Johnson, Bill Weld committee became the state committee for the Massachusetts Libertarian Party. We wrote bylaws, constitution, filed them with the state, and then after 2020, uh, in 2020, there were elections uh, as required by the state at the presidential uh, primaries. All major parties have elections to elect their state committee. Uh, I know Chris Crawford and Peter Everett were reelected. Uh, but then in November of 2020, the Massachusetts Libertarian Party ceased to exist because they did not have a candidate who had gotten 3% in a vote, nor were 1% of the voters registered as libertarians. So that if I'm hearing you correctly, Donald Trump could choose to run for governor in Massachusetts as a libertarian. And if he received over 3% of the vote, Donald Trump and his people would become the board of the LP Mass. Is that uh, correct? Uh, assuming that he were eligible to run as a libertarian, which in Massachusetts, uh, you know, just means that you can't have been affiliated with either uh, with any other major party, then yes, that's exactly correct. Thank you, sir. All right, um, Mr. Rodsep, I see your hand up next. Thank you. Uh, I actually have three questions. Um, the first one is that, uh, Mr. Fishman, uh, you had continuously used the word PAC or, or the abbreviation PAC, Political Action Committee. Um, that's my concern. Now I'm looking on the FEC webpage and it says that you're actually a party qualified committee, um, not a political action committee, which would then allow you to operate directly with our federal candidates as well as be affiliated with the national party. Um, is that to your understanding as well, sir? So that is the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts. Uh, they are the, uh, they are the affiliate of national. So that's what makes them a party qualified committee. Okay. Um, other than that, though, they are, I mean, they are a political action committee. Got you. But the FEC doesn't see them as a... No, a, a party qualified committee is still a PAC. Okay. But it operates under different rules where it can actually work with our presidential candidate and stuff? 
it, it, yeah, it changes your sort of donation limits. Gotcha. I just wanted to verify. Yeah. Uh, and I appreciate that information. Um, you were saying that anyone that would qualify as a potential libertarian could run as a libertarian in Massachusetts. And then if they received 3%, uh, or four percent. I'm sorry. Uh, the three percent, correct. Three percent. Uh, they would then become the de facto new Libertarian Party if it was a qualifying race. Um, is there any methodology to select who our presidential election or candidate is on your behalf, or is that just kind of no? So there is a. Uh... It, when we have major party status. So, so the one other thing about it is that when you have major party status, mm -hmm. uh, you automatically get the, the, your party name's ballot line for the presidential election. So, uh, you know, I ran really hard uh, in 2018. Mm -hmm. I wanted to win, but it originally was planned as a ballot access campaign. And the fact that I got four and a half percent meant we didn't have to spend $60,000 to put Joe Jorgensen on the uh, ballot. So when you are a major party and there's a presidential election, you get to pick the, uh, the committee gets to decide whoever they want to put on the uh, presidential uh, ballot line in 2020. So Joe Jorgensen was uh, put on the ballot by the Massachusetts Libertarian Party, who had been elected at the uh, state committee election during the Libertarian primaries by the state of Massachusetts, and everybody was eligible to vote in them. Okay, so in 2024, it's kind of whoever gets to the well first. Uh, in 2020, yeah, it's going to be, a, I am very hopeful that there will be a candidate who will get 3% in a statewide race this year, in which case that person would have, ballot, that state committee would have ballot access, have the Libertarian Party ballot access. However, assuming that doesn't happen, uh, then it's about gathering the signatures. And so whoever is able to gather the uh 10,000 signatures, uh, you know, it, it's up to $5 a signature now. So call it uh, $75,000 to get the signatures for Massachusetts. Whoever's got the $75,000 gets to put their candidate on the, uh, on the ballot as the Libertarian candidate. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, I believe, Mr. Secretary and uh, members of the board, that... Mr. Hewitt and Mr. Smith have arrived. Is that correct? <clears throat> Mr. Hewitt or Mr. Smith? I, I'm here. Yeah, Mr. Okay. Smith, I'm here for sure. Thank Thanks. you. Mr. Hewitt, are you present? I see him on the list, but. Okay, he may have stepped away. Um, perhaps he'll confirm that soon. Okay, moving on. I have Mr. Mr. Nana, where'd you go? You... I'm still here. Okay, your hand's not up anymore, but you're on uh, the list. So. I, I just, I, I was going to ask a question, but this is, I mean, I think, I think my question was answered, so. Okay, I did see Mr. Hewitt just now. I saw his face, so yes, he is here, Mr. Wilford. Okay, uh, Mr. Nana, are you, so can I move on to the next person in the yeah, queue? Go ahead, yes, okay. go ahead. Thank you. Mr. Flores. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so I, I just have a, a couple of questions here. Um, my first question in reading uh, the statement from uh, Ashley Shade that was submitted uh, in the statement there, she says, uh, we have the, we have no power to stop a person from running as a libertarian, um, uh, in your, uh, in the LAMA bylaws, article three, uh, section one, uh, under declaration of independence, uh, says resolve the libertarian association, of Massachusetts is free and independent body. And as such, it reserves the right to accept or reject any candidate chosen by the libertarian national party or other entity. Uh, with which Lama chooses to affiliate, and if a nationally chosen candidate is rejected, to run no candidates or such alternate candidate as it may choose. Uh, so I guess my question would be, uh, under Lama's current structure, which individuals or what entity is responsible for 
ensuring that the national ticket, the president, vice president uh, nominated at the Libertarian Party's nominating convention is actually put on the Commonwealth of Massachusetts general election ballot. Mr. Flores, to whom are you addressing that question? Uh, I uh, I mean, it might have been me and somebody that muted me. Yeah, uh, I can answer either, that. Uh, yeah, either I, Mr. Fishman or I believe uh, Miss. Uh, I, I can answer that question. Uh, sadly, nobody has the power to do that. Any person who wants to can be the Libertarian Party presidential candidate in Massachusetts, assuming they meet the signature requirements. There is no way, while the Libertarian, the Libertarian Association, while there exists no Massachusetts Libertarian Party, to keep anybody from using the libertarian name and running. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then my other question was about, uh, I believe page seven uh, on, of Ashley Shade's uh, <clears throat> submission. Uh, she says they've only, been re they've only been removed from our affiliate and are no longer eligible to be delegates for the national convention. Uh, my question would be, could these individuals individuals be national convention delegates through another affiliate or does that bar them altogether i'm gonna pause for just a second and just see is is ashley shade present tonight so you're reading from a statement that she submitted and so i want to give her an opportunity to respond accordingly madam chair she indicated in her statement that she had no um plans to attend okay this meeting. all right just making sure thank you um so if, if either Mr. Fishman or Ms. Crawford would feel comfortable answering yeah, the question. Yeah, I can answer that. Okay, that, thank you. That would completely depend on the other state. Uh, yeah, that's 100% that, that's it. It has nothing to do with Massachusetts. Another state wants to make you a delegate. Massachusetts doesn't get to say no. But, so they wouldn't be eligible to be a delegate in Massachusetts uh, under the other entity, correct? The only way you can be a delegate in Massachusetts is by being elected at the convention or appointed by the state committee. Perfect. Thank you both for your time. Appreciate it. All right. All I thank you, Mr. Flores. Uh, I have Mr. Ford. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, uh, either Ms. Crawford or Mr. Fishman, if in fact two competing groups ran candidates under the moniker of the Libertarian Party, who would in fact, and let's just say they both got over 3%, who does ballot access accrue to? Whoever gets the most votes. Okay. And it just, and this is a general question, I guess, for affiliates and uh, the specific affiliate agreement that exists between the Libertarian Party, well, I should say LAMA and the Libertarian National Party, is that contractual? Is there a time limit to that? Is, um, do we have that in writing? How does that work in general with our affiliates nationwide? I'm going to ask the state chair of Rhode Island, that. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. <laughs> oh, sorry. But how did it work when you were state chair? These, uh, this had taken place well before my time. We, uh, it's, 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 it's a genuine question. I simply don't know the answer to it. Um, I'm assuming that somewhere either. in the vault that there is a, uh, an agreement. I'm just wondering for the sake of argument, since we're covering some pretty important ground here, it, it, there's, there's a lot of lessons to be learned regardless of the situation. Uh, how that, how that's in place. I, I don't know. And I say that as former executive director. Right. It's, the, the rules are from the national party. The no, I understand. I'm, I'm just wondering where, you know, is there a secret tablet, a secret stone, a, 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 a tongue planted firmly in cheek? Is there a, a Dakota ring that we got? I, I, I'm being facetious to, to kind of lighten up the situation a little bit, but I'm just wondering what exists in terms of contractual or otherwise between the Libertarian National Committee, the Libertarian Party nationally, and individual affiliates. I'm going to have to point you to your regional representative for that question. <laughs> Madam Chair, anyone have any ideas? 
It sounds like we would all have to dig into the vault to find the affiliate agreements. Actually, I can speak to that. We asked for them uh, several months ago under our prior chair and they do not exist. There is no affiliate agreement. Um, I believe our former secretary was able to find maybe one old archive one, but as far as, as affiliate agreements, nobody was able to produce them. That is correct. There is only one that still exists. The rest of them were uh, destroyed in a fire or by flood. And even to that point, we were told that they there there are varying records. Some people think they may have the oldest. There may be older copies that may be available. There's absolutely nothing written down. There's no chartering within our organization. Um, quite <clears throat> frankly, there's no paperwork to say that any of our affiliates legally, as far as I can tell, actually exist right now. It's bizarre. Well, as my father would say, interesting. I'll let this just hang out there. Thank you. Mr. Moman and then Mr. Smith, you will be next. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, actually, uh, a real quick point. Um, I just recently learned uh, from an old is issue of LP News that the Libertarian Party of Kentucky was granted affiliate status in 1973. I. Uh, and it was written in LP News, so I assume that's correct, but I don't know. Um, I have two basic questions here. During public comment, we heard that the bylaws permit the use of Francis and Francis for the purposes of board expediency, I believe it was. I, I might be mangling the exact wording. Um, but that appears in the bylaws and there's also a constitution In most organizations, the constitution would trump the bylaws. The constitution says a dues paying member is anyone who's, or any, a member is anyone who paid dues. And then there's another category for non dues paying. And Throughout the bylaws, the only noting of dues that I could find is that the party has the ability to set those dues, what, what, they, what they are, but I don't see in the Constitution a way to say that someone who has paid dues is not or is able to be stripped of their dues-paying membership. I do see in the bylaws a provision for removing membership generally, um, but the Constitution says people who are dues paying members are members. And then people who are not dues paying members, the non dues paying members can be defined inside the bylaws by the committee. So I guess I'm just trying to figure out uh, the, the relationship here between bylaws article four, section nine, and, and does it mean that the committee can do anything as long as it promotes expediency, or does the Constitution trump the bylaws? And I will address that to Ms. Crawford because I think and she can hand that off to whoever she needs to. Well, the Francis and Francis is not because it's expedient, it's because that's the book that we use to figure out how to how to conduct our meetings right so, i mean I'm so sorry. robert's rules of order would be expedient in the same way if that's what we used so <laughs> I, I apologize the public comment earlier um and i used the wrong word is that the application of the rules of order shall facilitate not obstruct the advance of business and so Right, and that, that applies to any, whether it's Francis and Francis or Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, sure. I guess what I'm trying to get at is, does that particular section of that particular article of the bylaws give the state party, is it interpreted to give your state affiliate the ability to say that despite the Constitution saying anyone who has paid dues is a member, the ability to then 
in the bylaws say except when we say so? No, I don't think I don't think that thing about um, not letting. So we just don't want people to. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this never really came up before, but and I think George actually put this in. I, I would say we that don't want people to use the bylaws to abuse the process of of doing stuff, and um, you know, it's it's not something that we have to invoke because we we just you know we we try and follow the rules, but the 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 fact that we can throw somebody out or eject a member is it's in our bylaws and you know it's got a, in there and it's also the in the constitution it's also in the constitution voting. article 4 section 10 the state committee article. may by two-thirds vote of its entire membership expel a person oh, sorry, article four what was that mr fishman article the, four section 10 um, okay yes it's for cause after a well hang on a second but that's that's the state committee can expel someone from the state committee. That's under the section about no. state committees, not about members. Yeah, it is. It's about members. We can expel a member for cause and we've done it in the past. Okay. And, and I will take that that is your interpretation then. Um, if that's the case, um, was there cause given and was there due process given to the members that were rejected? Well, the, 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 there's no particular due process other than it has to be for cause. And, you know, if, the, if we agree that it's for cause, then that's it. It says, As, for, it says for cause, comma, after affording the accused reasonable access to due process. That's for state committee members, not for members of the organization. That's the section I was just pointed to, though. Sorry, I was, when I pointed to that, I... Yeah. You were pointed to our, our language is occasionally uh, incomplete, as you know, may happen. Sometimes state committee refers to state committee, uh, and sometimes uh, sure. it's the body. No, Dan, Dan's just was wrong. I'm wrong. I apologize. Okay, I am so, not an officer of the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts. So where, so where is it in the Constitution, or does it exist in the Constitution that the state committee can revoke a membership? No, it's in the bylaws. Okay. So the Constitution does say members are all dues-paying members in Massachusetts. And the bylaws provide a means to remove someone under Article 1, Section 3, termination of membership. Right. And that's, okay, that's where you're going with that. All right, I will move on. The other question I have is, do you believe this removal may have gone a little overboard? Um, that assigning every single signer. Objection, speculative. I'm just asking the question. Um, the reason I asked the question is that I know one of the people personally um, is definitely not a member of any PAC and uh, is actually just genuinely a nice guy. Um, I feel really bad for him because he, he's a nice guy. Um, well, I don't know. you know, we we are willing to reinstate people. If they want to be reinstated, we'll consider it. Okay. I I just think that I, I don't know. It feels very very collectivist to say anyone who signed this petition is out. Well, That's see, we don't have any way of knowing who the which of the petition signers were, had eyes wide open that this was a Mises caucus attempt to take over our convention. We don't know which ones were. And there's no way to know because the Mises caucus hasn't provided us with their membership list. Sure. Okay. I mean, I, it seems like you may have taken a firebombing approach when a more strategic approach may have been in your better interests, but that's on you guys. What? Wait, I, I don't understand. I'm not a supporter of the Mises caucus. This is Susan Hogarth, Region 5. Oh, hold on, but, hold on. Mr. Oh, Mr. Moment has the floor and oh. he is having getting answers from Ms. Crawford. And, and I'm, I'm not going to have all the cross talk, so. conversation. 
And, and, no. and Madam no. Chair, and Madam Mr. Chair, I am, I am completing my questioning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Ms. Hogarth, do you want to be added to the queue? No. Okay. Mr. Smith. Thank you. Uh, so I want to direct this first question to um, anybody at Chris or Dan or whoever is the most familiar with election law in Massachusetts. Um, I have heard some speculation and I want, I'd like to answer this, uh, that Ashley shade, who was the chair at the time of this, um, ordeal was, uh, violating state law by remaining as the chair of Lama. Is that truthful or no? And, and either one of you can answer if whoever's more versed in the election law there. I will say that it is unclear because, uh, so the law says that Republicans and Democrats are each allowed to accept one to nominate one pack that their elected officials can remain a party of. Uh, this sort of came up when I was running for auditor and we asked the secretary of state for an opinion. And they said, well, you guys don't have any elected members of the house who normally select the pack that would be allowed to be the exception. So your state committee should decide the pack that is the exception. We decided to not do anything and wait for the government to come calling uh, before we decided to nominate anything. So it's unclear what the law is Mr. because Fishman, we've never the made, law, made the an exception. Pretty clear, the law pretty clearly states that she could not remain the chair of a board. I thought you were asking elected. me a question. Right. I, I mean, I, I'm just saying it, you, you, you said it's unclear, but it does say that you can't, you cannot. Why, why don't you read to me the section and I'll explain to you what you're missing there. I have to go look at it again. But yeah, because anyway. you'll see at the end where it says exception. I'm talking about the exception. Okay. And so was that followed is what I'm asking. Yeah. I mean, asked and answered. No, no, no. Was it followed? I mean, the exception that you're talking about was, was, was there like a vote taken to have her remain as the chair of a, of a board? It, it was not or... deemed necessary because we decided in 2018 that we weren't going to follow the state law until they made us. Okay. We um, had a ruling from the secretary of state that we would be able to nominate an exception, but it never came up. They never asked us to. Then why did Thank she? Was, uh, is there, Thank is you, there... Mr. Fishman, Mr. Smith. Um, are you, are you done? No, I'm not done at all. Thank I mean, you. it feels like you got an answer and now you're just arguing. So I'm trying to get question, answers to, to the issues that I've seen arise over the last month from all this. And okay, but you didn't cut that anybody question else off. was answered. Do you have another you didn't question? You cut anybody else off but me, of course. Do you um, have okay. another question? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Crawford, uh, this one's for you. Uh, a second ago, you said that um, there's a section in your constitution that states that um, people removed from the executive committee are supposed to be, and, I, and it was read by, by Mr. Um, Molman, that members of your executive committee are supposed to be given due process and be removed for cause. But you had two members of your executive committee that were removed because they had signed this position, this petition, by the way, not Mises caucus members. Um, and, uh, and they were removed without due process or, or cause really at all, since your constitution supports uh, a, a, um, a petition for a special convention. Um, is there, do you not think that that's a violation of, of your own uh, constitution by removing XCOM members with no due process? No, I don't. But it, it states it very clearly in your constitution that you have to have due process to remove executive committee. Members. No, we, we revoked their membership. Okay, this is wild. Thank you. Uh, that's all I have for now, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, Mr. Nana. Yes, thank you. Um, so I heard something interesting earlier, or at least I thought I heard. I would like to have clarification. So these actions taken were specifically to remove... Uh, Mises caucus members from the membership roles, correct or incorrect? No, incorrect. So what was the action was taken for what reason then? It was to remove the people who signed the petition. It, okay. Are they legally, according to your uh, documents, allowed to form this petition and gather signatures or is that an illegal action according to your organizational rules? Technically they are, but we deemed it fraudulent. 
Okay. Who was the cause? Okay, and their why actions was it, were fraudulent? Uh, any reason why it was deemed a fraudulent action? Well, yes, because they were part of the national campaign to take over state parties by the Mises Caucus, and it was organized by the Mises Caucus of Massachusetts. So I did hear correctly the first time. Okay, interesting. No, um, so would, this, you did not. Would, would you compare this action, say, to a congressman who is, or a, a governor, let's say, who was being recalled, uh, arbitrarily uh, revoking the citizenship of people who signed that recall petition? Would you say this is a similar action? Is that comparable? Or no. do you think this is something else? No. Okay. That's everything I have. Thank you, Mr. Nana. Um, Mr. Nicola. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a question for Ms. Crawford, and then I'd like to speak with some of the other folks here that haven't gotten a, an opportunity to speak tonight on the other side of this argument. Um, for Ms. Crawford, I just, I'm probably not going to get what I'm looking for, but I just want to ask what made these Mises Caucus members in your state different than the members in my state? You see, I have many Mises Caucus members that came in new to the party, um, somewhere within the last two years. I've been a member of the board of the Florida State Party since 2014, I believe. And I'd like to say I'm a, a veteran on the board. I've seen many people come and go, and I've uh, seen the, the Mises Caucus affiliated members join my state. I have given them many different opportunities to serve on different boards and in different positions, and many of which are, are now executive committee members. Um, I view them as any other member. I, I, I see them as affiliated to, to certainly the Mises Caucus as an organization, as a caucus, um, which they do caucus. Um, but I'm, I'm curious as to what, what, what did you see within your state that was the definitive reason or reasoning behind the, 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 the cause to, to terminate their membership? I mean, aside from the fact that they're affiliated with the National Mises Caucus, what particular actions or fears or worries did you have uh, that led to this predicament? How do I put this? Their behaviors were consistent with the orders that were coming down from Michael Heiss to take over the Libertarian National Convention. So the major concern that it seems to be the, the and concern the order, was- The orders were, I can quote, well, I can't find it now, but to, to just sign up anybody that you can find, it doesn't matter if they're a Libertarian, go to Yale, just sign up anybody and tell them we're gonna nail some liberals. Is, is that an actual quote from somewhere or is this? Yes, Michael Heiss. Okay. Um, and that's what they did in New Hampshire. I'd like to speak to, I don't know who's representing the other side of the, the folks that were terminated. Is, is there anyone, Ms. Bill, you no, were perhaps? Janelle. I'm sorry? Janelle. Chanel? Janelle. Janelle, are you here? So if I may, um, earlier on the list today, there was, uh, there were two names I saw come up and I see Brody Elwood. At, I believe that was one of the names that came up on the list as someone that people wanted to hear from on the list. If it was that is Brody true. Elwood and Janelle Holmes. Okay. Yes. Janelle was one of them, but I, I see Brody with the hand up. So I just wanted to make sure that that was one that I recognized from the list today. Um, is, is that correct? Mr. Smith, you're saying that Brody Elwood is one of them? Yeah, as far as that that list that we were given, it was Brody okay. Elwood and yes. Janelle. Yeah. Yes, definitely. That, that's what I want to go with right now. So, um, A point of personal privilege, Madam Chair. Ms. Mr. Bowen. Thank you. Um, we've kind of gotten off track here. I thought we were going to allow each of the parties, uh, and that's uh, uh, Janelle and Brody and then uh, Chris Crawford, 
um, to spend a few minutes uh, making statements before we started asking questions. That, that, that procedure was never established. Um, the second person I recognized from the LNC to speak started wanted to get things going by asking questions. And so that's how we got to where we are now. So at this point, what I'm hearing is Mr. Nikayla, uh, were you the one who just asked to hear from members of the opposing side of this? Correct. Mm -hmm. And if so, um, we've got Brody Elwood who is actually in line with a hand up. So if there is no objection, would that, would that be someone you would like to direct questions to? Yes, Madam Chair, I'll yield okay. my time. Okay. All right. And, and Brody, am I pronouncing your name correctly? Uh, yes, you are. Okay. Go ahead. Did, uh, Mr. Nikayla, did you have a specific question for him or you just want to let him speak? Um, I, I just wanted to hear his side of the, the okay. story and, 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 and particularly if he can touch on at some point what actions he think may or may not have led to this termination. All right, thank you. Uh, so if I heard your question correct, you you want me to speak on why I think I was kicked out specifically, or? Um, well, if you, can, if you can speak perhaps on behalf of yourself or perhaps on behalf of, from your angle, wh why did this occur? Now would be an opportunity for you to let us know what what happened? Uh, sorry, I believe Pat said something. I, just just a, a point of order. Both Brody and Janelle have prepared presentations that they'd like to address. So I, I think if I can just jump in for a second and say, could we give them the opportunity both to make those? And that would potentially answer a lot of questions. I would yeah, love I'll to hear Mr. Elwood say what he wants to say. It is his time right now. And then I have no problem without objection from Mr. Rodsept, who, who is next uh, to speak. We can hear the same from Janelle. Mr. Okay, Elwood, yeah, no, please proceed. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I don't have much to say off the bat because uh, uh, Janelle uh, has, uh, is the one who um, has prepared this presentation and it has the, okay. the uh, kind of summary behind it for everybody. I will jump in to speak uh, as necessary, um, but Janelle as a member of the state committee um, is the one who is going to be the uh, uh, kind of the contact point for uh, the expelled uh, members. And is Janelle on here? I have not. I, I, believe. I am on, yes. Okay, all right. You may, you may, you have the floor, madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right. Um, so I, first of all, thank you everyone um, for your time. Um, I don't want to go and read through um, everything that I sent you guys, but I do want to touch upon things. Um, I am here today and I'm in concert with multiple, um, I am the, sorry, let me start over. Um, I am the uh, duly elected communications director of the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts. Um, I am also the chair of the Libertarian Party of Worcester County. Um, we have just, we just celebrated our one year anniversary in December of 2021. Um, and I'm here today in concert with multiple other sub affiliates across the state of Massachusetts. And um, I think the point we want to get across is that we want to ask the LNC to exercise um, whatever discretionary right they have uh, to endorse in writing reinstatement of the 47 wrongly ousted members. Um, and reasons for that is, you know, we're disputing the, val the validity of the vote um, to expel as well as uh, the legality of the meeting in regards to the standards of official meeting protocol. Um, the meeting did not initially convene an open session um, and there was no roll call vote to enter an executive session. Uh, and nor was there an announcement of the official reason for entering the closed session. And furthermore, um, the agenda was never posted prior to the meeting and was withheld from at least um, myself and Charlie um, when we were later expelled. Now, um, as you guys have already gone over, the constitution provides reasonable access to due process for state committee members facing expulsion. Um, and that was per Article 4, Section 10, uh, 
do you guys need me to read that again or would you or do you guys feel like you're comfortable with that because i can go ahead um the state committee may by two-thirds vote of its entire membership expel a person from the state committee for cause after affording the accused reasonable access to due process Expiration of membership in the organization is cause, but payment of membership dues to renew membership prior to the vote constitutes an absolute defense. So this means that the expulsion of the two state committee members should have at the very least been separate motions and reasonable access to due process should have been afforded um, and not simply by revoking our membership um, as the constitution is the governing document over the bylaws. Um, I think that most could agree that a closed meeting in which the agenda was hidden from the accused members does not constitute due process. Um, so, and then we also want to call into question um, the membership director's eligibility to vote uh, as he is no longer a Massachusetts resident. Um, I'm not sure of the exact date that he moved but he is currently residing in New Hampshire. Um, and this is where it gets a little hairy. So it's article one of the bylaws states that eligibility for membership is members are all dues paying members in Massachusetts uh, and all non dues paying associate members, but also the Lama constitution article four section eight states that uh, to be elected or serve as a member or officer of the state committee, a person must be a member of the organization whose dues are current. So I think there's a little bit of confusion on whether his, if he's serving and he is not technically a member because he is not in Massachusetts, is he eligible to serve on the state committee? Um, and we're calling that into question. Uh, the, Final vote of the secret ballot, uh, it read six to one. So, but it should have correctly read six one two um, because the bylaws requires a two thirds vote of the entire state committee. Um, the entire state committee was not present. Um, they were too absent. So without the vote of the membership director, uh, who was present that evening. And I did not vote in favor of my own expulsion. Um, the motion would read 512. Um, and that would fail to meet the two thirds requirement. Um, and then we also call into question whether Ms. Shade was in violation of the Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 55, Section 5A. Um, and I'm not an attorney. I can't directly um, answer and, or give legal advice to that. Um, but it definitely calls into question of whether she should have been presiding um, at all. Um, so given this, if we were to question Ms. Shade's vote in this, um, and even if we were to afford her that her candidacy was allowable um, during her tenure. Um, it's pretty clear that once she held public office that she should have resigned immediately, um, but she waited to resign until after casting a vote for this. Um, and for the purpose of the argument on the vote to expel, um, if we were to negate Ms. Shade's vote as well, the potential, the potential vote would have read four, one, two. And again, that motion um, would have failed to pass. And finally, um, I would like to cite the recent standards of behavior, um, which was adopted in December. And in that provision, and which was explained let me just go here, sorry. Um, the argument for passing these standards of behavior 
um, was to outline exactly what constitutes grounds for expulsion, um, which was supposed to explain the four cause language in the Lama bylaws. Yet uh, conveniently, the document has not been up, uh, updated um, in the Lama bylaws. And it was again, it was passed in December. Um, so there's no reason why it should not be updated um, and clarified there, but um, under sanctions of that, it states um, a violation of any of these standards of behavior by a Lama State Committee member shall be considered ado adequate cause for the purpose of, um, sorry, for the purpose of an action under Article 4, Section 10 of the Lama Constitution. A violation of these standards of behavior by a non-state committee Lama member may result in the suspension or termination of membership. If the Lama State Committee by two thirds vote of its entire membership suspends or terminates the membership of a Lama member after the member has received access to due process. Due process shall be defined as an executive ses session in which the member in question shall be provided ample opportunity to present their case um, to the state committee with the member receiving adequate notice no less than seven days prior to such an executive session. Um, this executive session did not have seven days notice and none of these people um, that signed this petition were given any kind of notice um, that they were going to be excelled, expelled for signing the petition. Um, and I just like to say that, you know, we're dealing with the committee is willing to expel members simply for petitioning them. Um, but also they have, there's questions of whether they have acted outside the bounds of the law. Um, they have acted outside of their own bylaws and their own constitution. And I'd like to ask people to consider um, if the state were to remove your voting rights for issuing a petition against them, how would you react? Um, and if it's if we don't want the state doing something to us, I don't believe we should be doing it to other libertarians. I find this action was unconscionable, unethical, and unbecoming um, of libertarian leadership. So in addition to asking for endorsement to reinstate the aggrieved members, we ask the LNC um, to pass a resolution recommending the next LNC, um, next elected LNC, take up the matter in their first meeting, should this not be resolved um, by the April 23rd convention in Massachusetts. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Holmes. Um, Mr. Elwood, would, did you have anything else to add to that? Uh, I do not uh, have anything in particular to add, uh, but I'm here to answer questions that uh, stem from this, uh, from Jim, uh, Ms. Holmes's comments. Thank you. Um, Mr. Flores, I had you in the lineup, but I see your hand is down now. Um, Mr. Rodsett, you are next. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for that statement that actually did answer several of the questions that I was going to pose. Um, one question that remains is how many motions were made to expel these members? Was it one or was it 47? And that's to the current board of Lama. One motion. One motion. And Ms. Crawford, I, I, I do appreciate your, your um, detail to your bylaws and constitution as you have been putting forward so far. Um, but in your bylaws, it does say a state committee expel a person. Do you feel that that should have been done in 47 different motions instead of one? No. No, okay. Uh, also, uh, you had said that you didn't know who was involved in what organization, and that's why you decided to expel 47, because you didn't have member roles. Um, would it have been smarter to make this 47 separate motions 
and then revisit individually or give each individual due process to see if they met your criteria. Yeah, I, I said before that we have a process for reinstating people and that's open to any anybody. Okay. What are your qualifi or what is what would be qualification for reinstatement in your mind? A two thirds vote by the state committee. No, I, I understand the, the process to do it, but what would deem someone worthy to be reinstated? What would, I, I what would really they have to, to prove to you? I, I, you know, they'd have to make a case. I can't really tell you what that would be. Okay. Um, how would, how would they go ahead and petition you for re-establishment into the party if you can't give criteria? You know, they have to have their own criteria and convince us. Okay. Um, then I, I'm going to ask the... Uh, the next question uh, to uh, the individuals that are present that have been expelled from the party. Um, I, I kind of want to know uh, from you, what criteria do you think you should be putting forward to be readmitted into LAMA? Uh, I can speak to that real quick. Um, I don't think I should have to prove anything to rejoin the organization that I uh, view that I've been illegitimately uh, removed from by a state committee that has acted uh, illegally, as uh, Janelle has referred to. Um, I will I will speak quickly on the atmosphere that the state committee has fostered inside the party. I joined the party. I you know attempted to um, do what I saw as good work. And you know, I had attended many state committee meetings, and I just saw how ex how um, how the state committee did not like new members coming in and giving their very strong opinions. I won't say that they weren't strong opinions, but they were strong opinions on how things should be done, uh, and that uh, we were looking to get involved and to um, grow Llama and uh, uh, basically change the direction of Llama that we saw it was going in a in a bad direction. Uh, and uh, so I personally don't think I should have to prove anything to uh, rejoin Lama because I was removed uh, illegitimately. Uh, but I, I, I can say that the atmosphere of the current state committee, uh, they are not being truthful when they say uh, that they are have an open mind about admitting new members. Um, Chris Crawford has shown bias towards a certain subset of the membership who happened to caucus with the Mises, uh, Mises caucus that is irrelevant to the current conversation. Uh, what they have done is, is completely, as Janelle has said, um, unethical and unbecoming of libertarian leaders. And uh, I don't think I should have to prove anything uh, to rejoin the party. I mean, that's uh, does the state do that? Does the state uh, say, hey, uh, you're guilty of um, murder, so we're going to stick you in prison until you prove you have not murdered somebody? Uh, no, we, uh, the state doesn't even do that, and the state is a horrible organization. So why are, we, why are libertarians uh, gatekeeping by saying, oh, you uh, uh, submitted this fraudulent petition, you exercised your member rights, and now we're going to kick you out, and you know, if we feel like it, we're going to readmit you? Thank you very That's much, Brody. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, last question, uh, also to you, Brody, uh, is that it was stated that the current board feels that there were bad actors among these 47 uh, that were trying to overthrow the party uh, and or, or to direct it in a new direction uh, that was counterintuitive, I guess, to the libertarian value. Um, to your best knowledge, and I, I don't want you to speak for anybody, uh, but I'm assuming that you know the majority of the 47 individuals that were removed. To your best knowledge, did any of those individuals fit that criteria and did they deserve to be removed? Uh, in my opinion, no. Um, I mean, how do you change an organization but join it and get involved? Um, also, for context, I'm the chair of the Libertarian uh, Party of Millsex, 
how did I form that party? Well, I, you know, saw that there wasn't a local affiliate in my area. I networked with libertarians whom I knew very well. And I said, hey, let's let's form this party so that we can start doing local action under the Libertarian Party name. And that's exactly what I did. And so many of those people who signed the petition are from my own affiliate. Um, and uh, I, so I do know them well, and um, I, they don't have any intentions of you know, so-called, you know, bringing the Libertarian Party in a in a unlibertarian direction. I mean, we have different opinions of how things should be run. That is absolutely correct. But to say it's unlibertarian is is absolutely untrue. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. Smith. Yeah, uh, I have a question for Janelle. So I, I asked this question to Chris, and she basically told me that it wasn't against. Uh, the Constitution, although it does have a provision in there that if you were an XCOM member, you were removed. You were an XCOM member, correct, Janelle? Correct. And do you feel that you received due process for being removed? Absolutely not. Um, even the agenda was, uh, was withheld from me before entering the meeting. Sure. And then um, you, you mentioned the counts for the vote. Um, that didn't include yourself or Mr. Um, uh, Charlie Larkin, did it? Um, the count for the vote included myself. I voted um, against my own expulsion. Um, sure. Mr. Sure. Mr. Larkin was not present for the meeting. No. Yeah. So 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 it was Mr. Larkin and and Mr. Sisto were not present. Correct. Cor correct. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't really have any more questions. I think this thing is absolutely wild. Well, I do have one thing to say to uh, Miss Crawford, though. <laughs> If you don't have criteria for how these people can get back into becoming a member for the party, then you don't have criteria for removing them. I don't understand how you can say that you don't know what it would take for them to become members again. And then on out of the other side of your mouth, say that you, but you know what it took for them to not be members. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't line up at all. I think this is petty tyrant crap and it's disgusting. That's all I have to say. Thanks. Madam Chair, point of order. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Mr. Longstreth? Uh, yes, I just wanted to note for order's sake, uh, I need to leave for the meeting. So if any vote does come, uh, my role will be vacant. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nana, and then Mr. Nikayla. Thank you. Um, so I just kind of want to clear things up for, for some of our members and anybody else that may be on the call. Um, I know there were some rumors circulating that we intended to disaffiliate Massachusetts. That's not possible according to our own rules at this time because we are so close to the national convention. So I'd like that to be known. Um, uh, the second thing I would like to be known is that there really is no action that can be taken uh, on this matter, um, to my knowledge, um, that, that's tangible at least, um, other than maybe a strongly worded letter. So I just want to kind of let people know factually where we stand right now, regardless of how anybody feels, there, there's really nothing we can do at this time. Thank you, Mr. Nana. Um, Mr. Nikayla, was that it, Mr. Nana? It was. Okay, thank you. Mr. Nikayla. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And I just want to let Janelle know in, in her request of, LNC action that there's nothing we can do to hold the next LNC to any particular action. So if something is going to be done, and I'm not suggesting it be done or not, it would have to be after uh, Reno. But I just want to say on this matter, uh, a couple of things that, that have come to my mind. And I think it's important to note that if somebody has the competency to do something and the desire to do something, then nothing about their caucus alignment should hold them back. But minimizing the difference is not the same as pretending difference does not exist. To assume that ideas, philosophy, and outlook mean nothing would be ridiculous, but to assume that they mean everything would be fatal. Disagreement is not oppression. Argument is not assault. Petitions, even ones against your authority, are not fraud. The answer to speech that we do not like is more speech. I'm afraid that in this scenario and, and many like it that I've seen come up so far is that we're like Don Quixote chasing windmills. You have the Mises caucus, which I know has strong rhetoric at times, 
And you have these movements that are afraid of Mr. Nikayla, I think we lost you. And I can say from my perspective that in my state, in Florida, we're not having these issues. I got kicked out for a second. Um, anyway, I just want to say that, you know, I, I, I don't see what we can do here as an LNC, but seeing this from a bird's eye view, I can certainly say that I, I really hope this is the last time we have to go through this scenario. And I really hope the folks involved can, can see this for what this is. Um, these purges have to stop and we need to start looking at each other like libertarians and not uh, like monoliths. There, there needs to be a coming together here because there's a lot more happening in this world than just what's going on in this party. I have a daughter being born in two weeks. What kind of world am I gonna be building for her and what kind of world are we be gonna be building through this party? If we continue to fight like this, if we continue to do things that don't make sense, then I, I think we're going to continue having uh, these schisms which are causing issues. It's disenfranchising people that shouldn't be disenfranchised. It's just silly. It's really silly to me. So all I have to say is as a state chair for Florida, um, we have the caucus in our party. We're doing fine. Many other states are doing the same thing. And uh, I invite you and others to reconsider this action and, and talk to the people that have been kicked out because it, to me, it's wrong. So that's all I got to say. I, I hope you guys work it out. Um, and, and I hope that these events do not continue because it's very frustrating and unfortunate that we have to revisit it. And hopefully we can actually get some things done. That's all I got. Thank you, Mr. Nicaela, Mr. Flores, and then Mr. Ford. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a, a couple of questions. Uh, my first question would be in, um, I, I'm not even sure who to direct the question at because I'm not even sure who would be able to answer it. But uh, uh, I'm not sure if anybody is aware of when uh, the Lama State Committee or the, the Lama Group would have petitioned the LNC to be uh, recognized as a state affiliate. Um, if anybody has an answer to that of uh, when that date might have happened. Well, it was at least before I rejoined the state committee, which was about 10 years ago. We were the state affiliate at that time. It, and I think we were the state affiliate, probably the earliest convention I attended was 1984. So that's what, that's almost 40 years. Would that be the the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts, or is that the LAMA group that you are currently on the board of? It, it was not the state recognized party, that's for sure. There was no recognition of any Libertarian Party in 1984. None. I guess. Uh, so my question becomes: uh, if if this if this group was uh, never has never officially petitioned the LNC to be the recognized state affiliate. Um, my, uh, and I, I guess I'm thinking out loud here, but uh, I guess that puts us in a position where we're in violation of our bylaws by having to recognize affiliate <laughs> or, or did we um, recognize somebody by default by no longer recognizing a, a previous affiliate or I, I guess I'm just trying to understand the uh, situation that we're in here. Madam Chairman. Mr. Philly. Um, Lama has been the state affiliate since sometime in the 1970s. I can't be more precise than that. Lama continued to be the state affiliate through, if memory serves, 2002. Uh, 
In 2002, uh, State Chair Eli Israel arranged for LAMA and LPMA, which at that time was a major party, to merge. In 2006, LPMA ceased to be a major party and we went back to being LAMA, but there has been a continuous affiliate for all that time. Uh, there is a requirement that affiliates submit their constitution and bylaws every few years. While I was state chair, that was for 13 years, if I recall, and other offices for 13 years. I did that and greatly surprised the secretary who was, hadn't been seeing these very often. But we have been in a f continuous affiliate for all that time. Uh, as a slight clarification, LAMA is a private club. LPMA is the state recognized organization. Um, Massachusetts uses party to mean major party. However, the ballot line it simply reads libertarian. I hope that helps. Thank you, Mr. Phillies. Uh, Mr. Ford. Um, just for briefly, uh, a pattern has emerged among state affiliates where litmus tests are being applied. Individuals are deciding who may retain membership, who is to be purged. It's dangerous. If we are to seek relevancy as a political force here, then we need to embrace members. And sending the message out to activists, regardless if you agree or disagree with whatever their interpretation of the libertarian movement is, that you are not welcome here, will continue to reduce this party into sheer irrelevancy. It's immoral. And it's distinctly unlibertarian. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Uh, Mr. Wilford. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, at this time, it has been, I'm gonna say about 15 minutes shy of two hours. I think we have heard some rather disturbing things, but also we as a committee have admitted there is nothing we can actually do in this session. A lot of questions have been asked and there's a few that are becoming circular at this point. So at this time I wish to move to adjourn. Object. Second. We have a motion to adjourn. It has been seconded. There is an objection. Uh, so we will proceed to a vote on adjournment. Mr. Wilford, are you ready? Madam Chair. Right. Mr. Moman. Uh, as a point of, I think I can raise a point of information here. Um, is there anyone in the queue? Um, there are uh, two people after Mr. Wilford. Thank you. Are you ready to proceed, Madam Chair? Yes. Okay. Uh, going from the top this time. This is a, a motion. This is on the uh, on adjournment. Just so everybody yes. knows. Going from the top this time, uh, Adams. No. No. Bowen. No. No. Uh, Epke is not present. Uh, Hagen. Yes. Yes. Hewitt. Yes. Yes. Hogarth. Yes. Yes. Flores. No. No. Uh, Molman. No. No. Nana. Abstain. Abstain. Nikayla. No. No. Uh, Buffman. Uh, has, uh, I'll move on. Do we know if he's still here? Mr. Buffman, are you still present? I will take that as he is not. Uh, Rodsep. No. No. Uh, Sarwark? Yes. Yes. Smith. Uh, point, point information, this is no. Mr. Buffman. I was, I was unable to unmute, but I am here and I will be voting yes to end. Yes. Thank you. And I think I heard from Smith no, is that correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, I will be voting yes. And let me see if your vote will matter. It may actually on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It will not matter by one, Madam Chair. I will not vote. Okay. 
Motion fails. Thank you, Mr. Wilford. Ms. Adams. Yes. So I just have, uh, I want to get back to the, the Llama LP mass kind of question. Uh, I think we're dealing with several things here. I think this is one that the LNC certainly can do something about or certainly needs to address in one way or another. So, and, and Mr. Phillies, I'd like to direct this question to you if, if you're amendable. Um, my question is, was Lama de facto disaffiliated from 2016 to 2020 when LP Mass became the recognized holder of the ballot line? Or did we at that time recognize two affiliates in violation of our bylaws um, because in my mind, one of those things must be true. And if Lama was, in fact, at least de facto disaffiliated, when did this board take action to reaffiliate them? Madam Chair, uh, the Mr. answer Phillips? to the question, yeah, oh, apologies. Uh, the answer to the question is no and no. The affiliate was continuously LAMA, the Libertarian Association of Massachusetts. Uh, the Libertarian Party of Massachusetts, the state organization, the state political party, that means major party under our state law, is a distinct organization. But at all times, LAMA was affiliated. Uh, in order for LAMA to have been disaffiliated in 2016, there would have had to have been a vote of the LNC, which there certainly was not. Rather, what happens is that LAMA continues indefinitely, and every so often LPMA, Libertarian Party of Massachusetts, appears as a separate organization. Did that help? Maybe marginally. My concern is we have one organization using our branding that is not our affiliate, that we have not actually granted permission to use our branding, who holds our ballot line at certain times, and another organization that is our affiliate that doesn't necessarily use our branding and doesn't hold our ballot line at some times, and it's leading to some confusion for me. So thank you so much for your attempt to at least May clarify. I speak to that, please? Please, please. Okay, Lama does place. not Lama does not hold a ballot line. Uh, the only group, if you don't like the fact that Massachusetts recognizes Libertarian, the actual legal name, as a state party, you need to sue the Commonwealth of Massachusetts because they are ignoring your um, IP position. Lama, which is the affiliate, ha is always there, but Lama has no say in who runs for political office in Massachusetts. Thank you, Mr. Phillies. Ms. Adams, has your question been addressed? Yes, that was it. Thank you. Mr. Smith. Yeah, my question is for Janelle. Um, so am I correct in hearing that the uh, 47 members that were expelled are still going to push forward and hold this special convention on February 12th? If Janelle's still here. She was a minute ago. I was having trouble on this. Um, uh, so yes, I believe that um, petitioners are intended, intending to hold the special convention um, as planned. And also I had um, just to make a point of clarification, um, the special pet uh, petition, uh, the petition for the special convention rather, sorry, um, you know, even though it's being painted as a coup attempt called for nominations from the floor with anybody that's currently sitting on the state committee um, who could could be reelected to their position. Um, so as long as it went out to all of the current dues paying members, everyone would have been able to have people come and vote for them. Um, so yes, I believe Correct. that it's still, yes. Yeah, that's what I that's what I was under the impression of as well. And I was I was going to ask this the the um, uh, notification for this is being sent to all dues paying members in in Massachusetts, correct? Well, we don't have the membership roles, and uh, I don't have access to them any longer because I've been expelled. But that was the intention, correct? Correct. That was the intention. Um the the state uh, if the state committee recognized the petition um, as valid. 
um, which we know that their opinion now is that, it is that they believe it is not valid and they've actually called it fraudulent. Um, but they would have had to give the members 30 days notice of the special convention. Um, and yes, everyone would have been able to show up and anybody would have been able to vote for whoever, whomever they wanted. Okay. Okay, well, so so this is what I'm hearing. There is obviously like some serious issues surrounding this. I mean, there was pretty blatant uh, corruption in my mind, and you could call that speculation if you want. Um, it was a, a, a constitutionally uh, correct petition that they tried to file. Uh, they got 47 members to sign it. Uh, executive member uh, members of the executive committee were removed. Uh, without due process from the XCOM uh, in violation of the bylaws or of the constitution. Um, you know, as an LNC, we, we constantly try to say we can't act, we can't do this, but we do run the national convention and this is directly affecting uh, the delegates to that national convention. So I'm going to make a motion to uh, go ahead and um, recognize the results of the special convention that they're holding in uh, Massachusetts. All the dues paying members are allowed to show up and vote for who they want. Um, this petition was not fraudulent. It was well within the guidelines of their own constitution. And as an LNC, we should recognize the party uh, that is elected. So I'm going to make a motion that we recognize that not the next LNC, this LNC. Thank you. Hmm. Mr. S Mr. Smith, uh, you move to recognize the, could you state it again for the minutes? Yeah, so I'm going to make a motion to uh, recognize the results of the special convention being held February 12th in Massachusetts that was petitioned for by members of LAMA and signed by 40, 47 people. Okay, I think I have that. Thank you. I'll second that for discussion. Madam Chair, I have a point of order, I think. Mr. Nana? I, I mean, I hate to do it because I kind of support the spirit of the motion, but I think it's out of order because we call this meeting simply for discussion. Mr. Nana, I agree with you. Um, I believe it is out of order. Um, it's not, and I'll appear the ruling for the chair. Did, Mr. Smith, did I hear you say it is not in order, but you're appealing my ruling anyway? No, no I'm saying I'm saying that it's not out of order. I oh. don't agree. Um, um, hang on a second. I'm reading a note from the parliamentarian that I have asked for. Yes, uh, it is not in order. So um, I would be ruling the motion out of order. The, partly because the meeting was called specifically for discussion purposes. And that was clearly the understanding throughout all of the commentary. Um, so that was not a surprise. It's actually been stated multiple times on this call that we wouldn't be taking any action. So I, I uh, disagree. my ruling is I, that it's out of order. I, well, I'm appealing the ruling of the chair. Uh, Understood, uh, as I expected. So, yep. um, so we have an appeal from the ruling of the chair. Second. Does that have to be seconded? Um, I, I don't have anything further to speak to, to my ruling. Um, Mr. Smith, you're welcome to speak against yeah, my ruling. I, I disagree that, that we can call a meeting and then take no action whatsoever. Uh, that's just a ridiculous notion. We can definitely take action. Um, you know, the chair can say that the chair can say that we can't take action, but we can, um, I don't need to, I don't need to cite Rohner. We're a board. We're allowed to make motions in our board meetings. And uh, I, I think that we've heard enough here to know that things were done wrong, um, that people were pushed out of the party that didn't deserve to be pushed out of the party. And we're dealing with blatant corruption and we should do something because it's our job. We were elected to represent the body as a whole. And if we do nothing here, we, we don't deserve our positions. We, we shouldn't have been elected to these positions if we were elected to, to do nothing. So um, I disagree with the chair. I hope you guys will support me. 
and uh, and appeal this ruling so that we can make a motion and and uh, you know give some closure to the aggrieved parties here because that's our job. Thanks. Okay. Um, is anyone else wishing to speak um, in favor of or against the ruling of the chair? I see Mr. Rotset ha has had his hand up for a while. I'm assuming on something else. Mr. Molman, do you wish to speak to this particular matter? Uh, I do. Um, I do think that something may come. I just don't know that we need to do it tonight. And the only reason I say that is I've just digested two and a half hours worth of information, wrapping my head around the dual bodies uh, I did read through all the things that were submitted. I can't say that I've fully digested that. It was a lot. I would like a little bit more time to, to really consider what we're going to do um, for the benefit of the members in Massachusetts, for the members of the Judicial Committee who are, I see on the call as well, and their time. Um, I want to try to make sure whatever we do is as technically correct as absolutely possible. And, and so, um, Mr. Smith, while, while I 100% agree that action is likely, I, I don't think it's good to do this evening. So that's all. I, can, I, can, I, can I respond since I was brought up? Go for it, Josh. All right, look. Uh, it, it, anybody who's listened to this meeting can hear what's going on here. And, you know, we, we've we gotten all the information we're going to get. You as know as well as I know we're not going to get any more information. The best thing we can do is let them hold a special election and figure it out and then just recognize the results, man. It's really easy to do. We don't have to do anything else. It's it, We're not interfering by doing that. We're just recognizing which is what we've been asked to do. So let's do our job, get it done, and move on. All right. Thanks. So I don't see anyone else seeking to be recognized on the um, appealing the chair's ruling. Um, Madam and Chair. I I, Mr. Ford? Just very briefly, I agree completely with Mr. Smith. Time is of the essence. Real harm is taking place, uh, both in the internal sense and in, in, in allowing these people an opportunity on the proper forum to, uh, to seek redress. And at the same time, this will continue to preoccupy the fight for liberty. It, it's time tonight. We had a situation a few weeks ago or a week or so ago where we acted with what was generally agreed by many as incomplete information. Tonight, we've had an exhaustive review by everyone involved. I, I believe it's time to call the question even if I'm not allowed to do so. Thank you. Um, I believe I get the last word on this. So uh, I will reiterate that this was not the purpose of this meeting. It was understood by all of us with, to be a fact finding an information gathering session. Um, it is not in order to make this motion at this time. And I agree with everybody else that has spoken already that on this, that we uh, having some time to digest this would be better. And there's nothing preventing Mr. Smith or anyone else from making a motion on the email list. Um, so if there is nothing further on this, we will proceed to a vote on the appeal from the ruling of the chair. A yes vote will sustain my ruling that Mr. Smith's motion is out of order. A no vote will, uh, if there are a majority of them, will overturn my ruling. I want to make sure everybody understands that. So a yes vote upholds my ruling that the motion is out of order. A no vote would overturn my ruling if uh, a majority of no votes occur. Mr. Wilford, whenever you are ready. Absolutely. Uh, going in reverse order this time, uh, starting with myself, I will vote yes. Uh, Smith. No. No. Sarwark. Yes. Yes. Rod set. Because of the wording issues of the motion that we made during the Delaware um, conference call, I would like to make sure that all of our I's and all of our T's are. Can you, 
uh, uh, inappropriate, I think. Okay. Mr. Roxon, I'm, I'm how explaining do you vote? my vote. That, that's all I'm doing. Uh, I am voting yes. Thank you, yes. Uh, Buffman. Yes. Yes. Nikayla. Uh, I'm reading the special meeting and I, Josh just will call me. No. Or, uh, sorry, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, Nana. Yes. Yes, Moman. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna assume Longstreth is not here still. Flores. Uh, Mr. Lucini is here. Okay, Lucini. Uh, since I just got here um, and I don't know what this is about, Mr. Flores has the vote. Flores? No. No. Uh, Hogarth? Yes. Yes. Hewitt? Yes. Yes. Hagen? Yes. Yes. I'm assuming Evke is still not here. Bowen? No. Did I hear no? Correct. No Correct. vote. Okay. Uh, Adams. Yes. Yes. Um, I can tell you the rulings of hell. The numbers are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven in favor, three opposed. Oh, Madam Chair, do you wish to vote? Uh, it's there's no need, right? So no. Yeah, correct. There's no need. And one abstention. <clears throat> okay, thank you. So the ruling is upheld. Uh, a motion to do anything uh, at this point is out of order. So Mr. Rogsep was next on deck. My hand's been up for a while too, so. Yes, and you were the one who made the motion. So after you is Mr. Rogsep. Mr. Rogsep, go ahead. If Mr. Smith is not done, I will let him continue. No, I put my hand up after I after I made the motion, Eric. So just whenever, I don't care. I just need to speak. Thanks. Then technically, you would be right after Mr. Rodsa. I will let if, Mr. If Smith. You essentially were getting back in line. Okay, Mr. Smith. I'm going to make a motion to adjourn uh, to time specific February 6th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern time to take up motions on this issue. Second. That was February 6th at what time? 7.30 Eastern to take up motions on this, this uh, specific topic the Massachusetts issue. Mr. Smith, may I ask why you would not just do this on the email list? Uh, I just think it'd be, it, I mean, we should have been able to do it at this meeting. It needs to be done at a meeting, I think. Oh. If you think it'd be done on the email list, that's fine too. But I think, I think the people who are aggrieved here deserve to hear everybody's thoughts on this and not just try and read an email list, so. A few minutes ago, you said that we've all heard everything we need to hear. You no, said that. The people who have been aggrieved of this in this situation need to hear us discuss it and not just uh, see some some writing on email. But uh, so, okay. So what you're saying is no. Madam you are Chair, not I'm not trying to have an argument with you. I didn't. I'm not I either. I'm just trying to get. I'm trying to save anything. a lot of people a lot of time, including our staff, from having to do another Sunday night meeting. When this is something that they can read about, they can read our thoughts and comments on the internet and we can vote just as effectively that way. Are you saying that my motion is out of order? I am not, I am. I was asking you to, to tell why that wouldn't work for you. I, and I've explained it to you. I think that the people deserve to hear us have a vocal discussion on this issue. Thank you. Thank you. You said Sunday the 6th, 7.30 Eastern. Correct. Mr. Secretary, was there a second? I have not heard a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll second it. I'll second. All right, we have a motion 
to adjourn. And well, your motion was twofold. It has an adjournment now, um, but also to set another meeting. It's, it's a time specific adjournment to take up this issue in two weeks where we can have a motion. It's giving us 14 days notice to bring motions back to the table on this issue. It's a time specific adjournment. Mr. Secretary, do you have all of the details you need? I, I do have all the details I, I need, but uh, a, a motion to set the time to adjourn or to adjourn to a time specific, I do believe is a debatable motion and, and I would like to speak on this motion. All right, um, so it has been moved and seconded. And I'll object. And Mr. Wilford is objecting. All right, um, Mr. Smith, do you believe that you have spoken adequately to your motion? I'll just say that I think we need to do this in person again. And and uh, we gives us two weeks to bring our motions and get ready and digest the information and reconvene together in person and and talk about it to, to the, the members. And they deserve to hear that we're either going to let them sink or swim. So um, that's that's all I have to say about it. Thank you. Mr. Wilford, would you like to speak to your objection? Yes, I would. Um, so my objection kind of rests on two points. Um, one, I, I don't really see the need uh, for this to be done in a second meeting. But even if we did find that it was needed to be done in a second meeting, I don't see how one person calling out a date and time at this particular point is a more effective means of doing that than calling a meeting on the email list when we all have time to look at our calendars and make a decision at that point. But even so, it the technicalities of it don't really sit well with me. I mean, we have a, a, a rule on special meetings and how they can only be called to address one thing. A motion to adjourn to a time specific is to adjourn a current session like you would see at a, um, at a, at a, a, a convention and then continue that meeting where it was left off once you pick it back up. And on a technicality, I'm not sure if picking this meeting back up really fixes the issue that we can bring motions up when this meeting was not originally called uh, for a motion. I, I would ask for, for some kind of uh, 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 for the parliamentarian to look into it, but I would almost think we would have to call a brand new meeting Mr. for this motion to really uh, uh, do what Mr. Smith is wanting it to do. Your point is taken, Mr. Wilford. Um, I, I asked Mr. Smith, would you be willing to... Yes. I am. I am. I'm going to ask Mr. Wilford if it's okay if I just set a new. Uh, I'll amend my my motion to just set a new meeting to take up motions on this specific topic uh, to February sixth at seven thirty p.m. Eastern time. Thank you. And if anyone would like to second that, feel I'll free. I'll second that. Okay, I need clarification on what you're doing. You're amending it so that we can, you can, you're just going to go to the email list and set no, the meeting? It, no, I'm setting a new meeting for February 6th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time to take up, to take up motions on this issue. A special meeting that gives us 14 days notice uh, and, and I am just amending my motion. And those motions will be, um, will be on the list for people to consider a week before the meeting? Of course. Point of order, are we? So, um, hang on one second, please. Mr. Wilford, I believe that what Mr. Smith has just done is amended a motion that was already moved and seconded. Well, if, if you agree that the original motion was out of order, then we wouldn't have to dispose of the previous one. This could just be a new motion. So okay. I, I guess that's resting on you now. Yes, and uh, I did. I do have notes from the parliamentarian that, that that would be appropriate. So thank you for that clarification. So yes, Mr. Smith, you are essentially now making a motion to set a new meeting just as you were before for this purpose. You will have the motions to the body a week prior um, and then your adjournment issue is secondary to this now. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, and someone did second, correct? Correct. And I'll All right. object. All right, Mr. Wilford has objected. All right, Mr. Smith, do you need to say anything further? <laughs> no, thank you. All right, Mr. Wilford, was, that was your objection, right? Yeah, I've, I've already spoken to the, that point of my objection. Okay. 
All right. Um, you your point parliamentary inquiry. Ms. Adams. I just would like some clarity. Um, the last ruling was that Mr. Smith couldn't make the motion he made because this meeting was a special meeting confined in purpose under the bylaws. Is this not still making, even though I want to see this happen, um, is this still not making a motion outside of the call of the meeting in violation of the call of the meeting? You um, can you can set another I meeting. What I don't want to do is have us vote and then in the middle of this vote, we're getting a different ruling or whatever. I just want clarity, please, if we you, could do that. You can set another meeting, Ms. Adams, from, from any meeting. So Okay, thank you. That was my question. Mr. Mr. Wilford, is, so as far as I know, is the only one objecting to this. And given that we're not attempting to take action at this meeting that we were not prepared to take, I am inclined to let this thing happen. This is okay. So I, I understand your concern. But again, this is why this actually would have made more sense if someone had just gone on the email list after this meeting was over and then proposed a meeting for the sixth. Um, are there any LNC members wishing to be recognized? For this, I'd like a point uh, of to, order to if, debate if, the meeting uh, scheduling of this meeting. Point of order: If you could stop, uh, if you want to be combative and and uh, argue over Mr. Rodset, please hand the gavel off. Do you have Thank you. something to say on this issue, Mr. Rodset? Yes, actually, I would like to make a uh, small amendment that mm -hmm. prior to uh, adjourning, we allow both uh, parties to make closing remarks just in case if they are not able to attend on the 6th. Thank you, Mr. Roxette. Um, Mr. Lucci. of information. Mr. Wilford. So it, it was my understanding and what I put in the minutes that this motion is only to call a special meeting. Was it Mr. Smith's intention to both adjourn and call a separate meeting in this one motion? Those are two separate motions, Mr. Wilford. So we'll we'll take up the the adjournment after this one's voted on. Right. I, I misunderstood. Thank you very much, Mr. Lucini. My issues have been addressed. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. I'll just note that I will not be available at that time, so I'll be voting against. Thank you, Mr. Hagan. Anyone else? Uh, LNC members wishing to be recognized on the matter of setting a special meeting for two weeks from today, I believe, so the 6th, for the purpose of taking up motions related to uh, Massachusetts, the Massachusetts affiliate. All right, seeing no one else seeking to be recognized, um, is there any objection to proceeding to a vote on that motion? All right, we will proceed to a vote on the motion. So Mr. Wilford, can you please clarify for us what the motion is and then proceed with roll call. Yep. Uh, Smith moved to call a new special meeting on February 6th at 7.30 um, to consider Start. matters. Oh, that's good. Cool. We'll leave it there. No, uh, no I said uh, 7.30 Eastern. 7.30 Eastern, yeah. Yep. Uh, Adams. Yeah. Okay, Bowen. Yes. Yes. Hagen. No. No. Hewitt. Sorry, no. I don't understand. Mr. Hewitt, can you repeat? I said no. No, thank you. Hogarth. Yes. Yes. Lucini. Um, the time is inconvenient, but yes. Mullen. Yes. Anna. Yes. Michaela. Yes. Buffman. No. Ratsa. Yes. Sarwark. No. No. Smith. Absolutely yes. Yes. I will be voting no. Uh, Madam Chair, your vote isn't going to sway anything. Um, okay, yeah, I'm not going to vote. I was just okay. going to ask if you had you had updated our count. We should have everybody at this point, right? Uh, I no, don't I'm, have Epke. Is, is, oh, is Epke joined? So. 
Okay. Yeah. So we still yeah. had two gone. Yeah. All right. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Uh, in that case, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine in favor. One, two, three, four, five opposed. One abstention. Motion passes. All right, so the net effect then is on February 6th, we now have a meeting specifically called for to consider motions uh, regarding the affiliate in Massachusetts at 7.30 Eastern. All right. The um, sixth. Just want to make sure the fifth or the sixth, I'm sorry, just for my personal. The it's the sixth, the Sunday, okay. correct? Thank you. Yeah, it's another Sunday meeting. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Are you in the queue? Um, Mr. Rodset, are you, is your hand still up from earlier? Yes, it is. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn after allowing brief comments from both individuals representing the sides in Massachusetts. Hey. How, how brief? Uh, five minutes. Eric, would it be better if we asked them if they could attend the sixth first? They can also submit in writing. Okay. I, if if that's not amenable, then I'll just make a motion to adjourn. Yeah, I mean, maybe we. Could, it might be better to ask them if they can if they can join the meeting on the sixth at seven thirty Eastern. And if they if they can't, then we could do their comments now. If we have some order, Mr. Rodset, can you please clarify your motion? Well, I'm going to ask the uh, individuals if they would prefer to make closing comments now or uh, at on the sixth meeting. And those individuals are uh, uh, Ms. Crawford. And uh, Janelle. And Janelle and, and Brody. Also, also Brody was one, right? And also uh, Mr. Fishman. Okay, so Ms. Crawford, will you be available to attend the meeting on the 6th or would you like to give your closing statements now or would you like to even submit them, you know, another way if I'm, neither of those work for you? I, I can make the meeting on the 6th and I don't need to say anything tonight. Thank you. Um, Janelle, Ms. Holmes. I likewise can make the meeting on the 6th. Thank you. And um, Brody Elwood. Uh, I likewise can make the meeting on the 6th and uh, we'll make my comments there. Um, you want to make your comments now? Oh, sorry, there uh, at that Okay, meeting. thank you. I, I misheard. And Mr. Fishman? Uh, Mr. Fishman left a while ago, I think, so. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Rodset. In that case, I make a motion to adjourn. All right, motion to Spare adjourn. It. it has been seconded, not debatable. Uh, any objection to adjournment? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great night. Good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>